have them down and I don't know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, are you going? Yep. Okay. So let's start over here, actually. Um, Do you I'll... want me to get a list? So nah, you can pass through everything? Well, so. go ahead. Yeah, I've got pretty much everything in my head, but in case okay, I miss okay. something, you can get, a, you can get a list. Um, all right. So let me talk about the color coding first. Um, the blue latex here represents deoxygenated blood, and the pink latex represents oxygenated blood. So that's a little clue in these preserved hearts as to what you're looking at, which chamber of the heart you're in, and so forth. But um, the place I usually like to start is the right atrium, and that's what we're seeing right here. And let's put this heart back together so we can look at it as a complete unit. And remember, um, when you're looking at the heart, if it looks like it has ears, you're looking at the front. Mm -hmm. It's like you're looking at yourself in the mirror. So <laughs> this, is a, <laughs> this is an ear right here. This is another ear over here. Um, and they're called oracles. oracles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. A-U-R-I-C-L-E-S, oracles, which just means little ears, okay? So those are the ears of the heart. Um, actually, let me just stick with this external view for a while and describe the external features. Um, so if you're looking at it from the front, then this is the right auricle, and this is the left auricle, and that makes this the right ventricle, and this one the left ventricle. And there's a sulcus that runs between them. So this is on the anterior side of the heart, and it's between the two ventricles, so it's called the anterior interventricular sulcus. And you can see there's some blood vessels that run within that sulcus, and they're stained with some latex too. So this pink one is the anterior interventricular artery, and the blue one is called the great cardiac vein. Now let's just, well, let's look at one more feature before I flip it over. Let's talk about the, the coronary sulcus. So the coronary sulcus is also called the atrioventricular sulcus because it runs between the atria and the ventricles. So these are auricles of the atria, and these are ventricles, and this is an atrioventricular sulcus, or coronary sulcus. And you can follow that all the way around to the back side of the heart. So this is still coronary sulcus back here. Um, looking at the heart from the posterior view, then this is the, the right atrium over here, and this is the left atrium, and that makes this the left ventricle and this is the right ventricle, and then we have a posterior interventricular septum. And there's some blood vessels running within that as well. Um, I can't really see the artery. If you did see an artery, that would be the posterior interventricular artery, and the vein is called the middle cardiac vein. Also back in here, we can see the coronary sinus. So the coronary sinus is just sort of an expanded uh, blood vessel. I'm trying to see if I can maybe work this inside. You can see like how thin walled that is. That's where um, the venous blood from the coronary circulation collects before draining into the right atrium. So if I were to kind of allow this thing to go where it wants to go, it would end up in the right atrium of the heart. Okay, so you have coronary sulcus. And I think you could call this the small cardiac vein right here, paralleling, paralleling the path of the right marginal artery. So before we leave the exterior, we should talk about uh, some other features. This is the apex of the heart right here. And the uh, superior and posterior aspects of the heart are called the base of the heart. So the base of the heart is just opposite the apex. So like all of this area here is called the base of the heart. It's just made of like the back side or the posterior side of the atria. Let's talk about great vessels. So if you're looking at the heart from above, um, this large one with the pink latex is the aorta. I don't know, can you see inside there? Can you see the aortic valve? It's probably not too visible. You can actually. You can? Mm -hmm. See the little cusp of it right there? and that one right there. 
It's the aortic valve. This is the pulmonary trunk, the blue one here. It's a little bit thinner walled. It doesn't have to deal with uh, as high pressures as the aorta. Um, so one of the nice things about a dissection is you can put your fingers in it and see where they end up. Uh, this ends up in the right ventricle. So uh, the pulmonary trunk is allowing blood to um, be ejected from the right ventricle into the pulmonary trunk and then out to the lungs. And the aorta receives blood from the left ventricle. Uh, maybe I could find a way in there. Uh, yeah, that goes to the left ventricle. So blood from the left ventricle gets pushed out the aorta to the body. Um, try to ignore the fact that this heart has already been cut through. So let's look at some other great vessels. If you go to the posterior side of the heart, um, going into the right atrium, you should find the vena cava. So here's a superior vena cava right here. And this is probably the inferior one. Yep, that's inferior vena cava right there. So again, um, if you use your fingers, you can see they both end up in the right atrium. And my fingers are touching each other right now. So I know I'm in the same chamber. So these are your vena cava, superior and inferior vena cava. Going into the left atrium, you have the pulmonary veins. So this looks like a pulmonary vein. And that should end up in a different chamber. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit tighter fit, but that goes into the left atrium somehow over there. Okay, so that's your left atrium. That's where this is ending up. And uh, this one does the same thing. And it looks like this one does too. They're, they're kind of a little bit uh, torn up in the back of the atrium there, but you have four uh, pulmonary veins in an intact heart. This one's just a little bit severed. All right, so we got pulmonary veins, we have vena cava, we got aorta, pulmonary trunk, atria, auricles. Um, talked a little bit about blood vessels. You can't really see the uh, right and left coronary arteries just because I think they're buried in too much fat in this heart and they're and they're a lot smaller than the coronary veins. So you can actually follow the great coronary vein or excuse me the great cardiac vein up the anterior interventricular sulcus and then over around here and that drains into the coronary sinus. So just this great cardiac vein follows the course of the coronary sulcus around the posterior side and then it's in the coronary sinus. Then that opens up into the right atrium. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and open it up. All right, so once the heart is opened up um, you can see this really thick layer of myocardium here. That's the interventricular septum the septum that divides the two ventricles. And I think the fastest and easiest way to tell the ventricles apart is just to see which one has the thickest walls. Um, so you can, I think, clearly see this one is thicker walled than this one, because that's a thinner wall there. So the, the thicker walled ventricle is the left ventricle. So this is the left ventricle, and this is the right ventricle. And remember, in these preserved hearts, they're color-coded. So the left ventricle pumps out oxygenated blood. So occasionally you'll find these little bits of pink latex that represents oxygenated blood. And the right ventricle pumps out deoxygenated blood. So some, sometimes you find this blue latex for deoxygenated blood. And let's talk about um, blood flow through the heart and valves. So we know that, well, let's just start with the vena cava. We know that blood flows into the right atrium through the superior and inferior vena cava. So if we go around to the back here, here's the superior vena cava. And uh, you can see that I've ended up in this chamber of the heart here. That's the right atrium. Um, and if you look closely at the right atrium, you see that the, the walls are not smooth, they're ridged. So these ridges are called pectinate muscles. And there's this valve that controls the flow of blood from the right atrium to the right ventricle. You could simply call this the right 
atrioventricular valve. That's the easiest name to remember. Um, it's also known as the tricuspid valve for having three cusps. And we have at least one cusp right here, um, possibly, possibly two cusps over there. This is definitely a cusp over here. It's sort of hard to tell where one cusp leaves off and the other one begins, but it looks like there's like two sets of papillary muscles. Um, so maybe this would be one of the cusps over here. Oh, there it is. Looks like this is one of the cusps right here. Here's another cusp right here. And then the third cusp is over here. So that's your tricuspid valve. Um, and then we have these uh, chordae tendineae, or tendinous cords, that run from the papillary muscles, that's a papillary muscle, to the cusps of the AV valves. Okay, so chordae tendineae, papillary muscle. And the job of these is to prevent prolapse of uh, the AV valves. So when the ventricles contract and increase blood pressure inside the ventricles, uh, kind of swishing down like this, these valves are prevented from uh, folding backwards into the atria. And maybe it's too hard to demonstrate with this. Um, anyway, let's continue to follow the flow of blood. So, um, let's say the right ventricle contracts. It's going to push blood out through the pulmonary trunk, which we'll, we'll have to go over to this side to see that. Okay. There's some really interesting trabeculae carniae in here. I should mention those as well. So the ridges of the um, atrial myocardium are called pectinate muscles, and then the ventricular myocardium, they're called trabeculae carniae. Those are trabeculae carniae ridges there, and over here, and over here. Okay. Anyway, let's continue on with the path. So we're in the right ventricle here, and um, when that contracts, it's going to push blood out through the pulmonary trunk. So we'll see if, uh, if in fact, that's where it's headed. If you can look right inside there, you can see the blue from my index finger. Mm -hmm. You see that? I saw it a couple times. All right. So anyway, that's the pulmonary trunk. Um, oops, I got a little red latex in there. That doesn't belong in there. I don't know if you can see. Can you see the pulmonary valve a little bit? Yeah, just a little, yep. Just a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the pulmonary semilunar valve. That ensures that blood flows just from the right ventricle into the pulmonary trunk. Um, during diastole, blood can settle back in the pulmonary trunk, but it'll, it'll land on that valve and it won't flow backwards into the heart. The valve prevents that backflow. So the pressure pushes the the valve open? Yep, pressure from the right ventricle when it contracts pushes the pulmonary valve open. That's right. Um, and then blood goes out to the lungs. But then when blood settles back, it's blood pressure in the pulmonary trunk that closes the pulmonary valve when it kind of settles back like that. Um, so let's say blood goes out to the lungs, goes from the pulmonary trunk out to the lungs, comes back to the heart, it'll come back into the left atrium as oxygenated blood. Um, so let's find the left atrium. Here's a bit of it here. Here's a bit of it over here. I don't know if there's a good uh, example of some pulmonary veins. Well, like this, it's kind of ripped open, but these would be pulmonary veins allowing blood back into the left atrium. And then from the left atrium into the left ventricle, the flow of blood is controlled by the bicuspid valve or the left atrioventricular valve. And uh, this valve, just like the tricuspid valve, is attached by chordae tendineae to papillary muscles. But you notice everything is bigger on the left side of the heart, right? Mm -hmm. Bigger valve, bigger chamber, longer chordae tendineae, bigger papillary muscles, uh, thicker walled myocardium. It's because it has a much bigger job to do. It has to pump blood out to the entire body through the aorta. 
So when this ventricle contracts, this left ventricle, um, it's going to push blood up through the aorta. And here, the way this has been dissected, you can actually see two cusps of the aortic valve really, really easily. Here's one. Here's a second one. And the third one is over here. <laughs> so whoever cut this uh, sliced right through the aortic valve. Okay, so three cusps of that stimulator valve. So then, I guess we can go back here. So then blood flows out through the aorta, goes to the body, and then uh, it'll come back through the vena cava, uh, like this one, like the superior vena cava, and then you're you're back into the right atrium. Um, and that is the journey through the heart.